What's going on everybody? Biker Dave here in the shop working on the YZ250. Installing the uh, steering stem, triple trees. Uh, we just check the steering bearings, upper and lower. You know, if you haven't checked yours in quite a while, make sure you do that because sometimes just turning it with forks installed, they might feel okay. But if you remove the forks, you can really get a good idea if your bearings are actually in good shape or not because if they feel a little bit notchy or if you hear uh, grinding noises or whatever inside there they either just need to be cleaned and re-greased or you need to replace them and if the bearing races inside look cruddy as well you might be able to clean them but you also might just need to replace them if it's been several years or if you you know bought a bike and you have no idea how long it's been since they've been cleaned or replaced it might be time to do it. Uh, removal and everything is not that big a deal. But reinstallation, you know, after you've put your bearings in and greased them properly, uh, reinstalling the lower stem here, the lower clamp and stem, I mean, it's covered pretty well in your service manual right here. But I'm going to just go over real quick something that some of you might not know. Uh, you know, once you have your upper bearing put in and it's greased and then your little cup that's on top of it, then you put this steering nut, you know, it's a slotted, funky looking little nut. You know, you turn that all the way down and then to properly set this up, got to get your torque wrench, unfortunately, and you'll do what's called an initial tightening to 27 foot pounds. Okay, so you of course need your little torque wrench. Um, now they make tools, you know, little hook tools that have a, a slot in them for your torque wrench to fit in, you know, because you're going to need to be able to turn this properly. So you might need a little hook tool like this that has a slot for your torque wrench to fit. If you don't have one of those, uh, you might have to create something or you buy, you know, you can buy tools like this. They're very expensive sometimes. Uh, you know, it's going to be roughly, I believe, 36 millimeters inner diameter. Or you might have to just create something, quite honestly. This is made from a uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, pinion nut, you know, for the transmission. We sell these, actually, because they fit a ton of other power sport vehicles on those slotted lock nuts. But we had to modify this one, as you can see. <laughs> it's been severely modified. But, you know, it needs to fit up top here. And this little sl slim washer will be the last piece that goes up top there. But it needs to fit right in there so that you can now get your torque wrench on it, tighten it down, loosen it, you know, as per the uh, instructions. So that's the only... Other trick is you got to have a proper tool to do this right. All right, so it says we should do an initial tightening of this steering ring nut to 27 foot pounds. All righty, so we set our wrench right here 27. Lock her down. Okay. Bring her around. What this is doing is squeezing the bearings together. You know, they need to come together some because this upper one is not screwed to anything. It's just slid down in there. All right, so bring her around. Listen for the click on your wrench or your... <laughs> if you have one of those expensive ones, there we go. If you have one of those that beeps when you, you, know, when you get the torque, listen for that, of course. Now you will loosen it one full revolution. You're basically going to loosen it until it's around hand tight. Okay. Bring it around and then one revolution. Right there. And that's basically, that's basically right at hand tight for this. And then we're going to tighten that again to 5.1 foot pounds, which is not much. Uh, this wrench won't even go that low, so I'm going to have to go to my inch-pound wrench. 
inch pound wrench I'll have to use for this little guy. And so it says 5.1 foot pounds. I've got inch pounds on this, so I have to multiply that times 12. 63 inch pounds, roughly. Somewhere in there. Not very tight. So remember that, you know, this does not need to be all that tight. 5.1 foot pounds or around in the you know low 60s in inch pounds. Bring her around, listen for the click, right there. That's all there is. It's really only about a half a turn past hand tight. It's not much. And it might feel just a little sluggish, very little, especially if they're brand new. If the races are new, the bearings are new, new grease, it might feel slightly sluggish. So don't, don't, don't worry about that. Okay, and that is that. Then we take our skinny little washer that'll go here, our upper clamp, this bad boy here sits right on there. Okay, and as far as sliding the fork tubes up into these clamps, sometimes, where's my wrench here? Sometimes you can just slide them up in there with no problem. Sometimes they're rather snug in there and you don't want to start scratching these up by zigzagging back and forth on it. So you have to be careful with that. Okay, so we will take our little 10 millimeter here. Now you should hold these of course at this point because you don't want them to go falling out possibly. Uh, but you'll need you know a couple of sets of hands here because you're, you're gonna use a flat blade screwdriver to spread this gap out just a little bit so that you can easily move the fork tubes up and down in these clamps. Okay, so you kind of need two sets of hands, especially if the bike is off the ground like this one is. Okay, so we're gonna loosen these boys off. Get your clamps in place. Make sure they're facing the right way. Okay, these are fairly loose now. Spread them out just a little. See what I mean? It gets to be almost needing extra hands here. Okay, here we go. There they go. Getting them, and especially on these aftermarket billet clamps, they are really snug and they do not require much tightening of your pinch bolts here. And you'll set them, usually you set them, there's a line here on the top of your fork tubes. You know, it's just a few millimeters down. Now some people set them differently depending on your needs or preferences, that sort of thing. But that's what the manual tells you. Basically line them up. I think it's around five millimeters down. And um, just gently tighten these guys for now you know, until you get the other one installed and get the front wheel installed and all that. All this needs to stay lightly tightened. And even when you finalize this installation, these pinch bolts are only to around 15 foot pounds, which is not much. You know, it's not like you're trying to muscle them down in place. They need to be just tight enough. So that's around 15. And um, you just repeat it for the other side right here. No big deal. Uh, now, once you've gotten the forks installed, then you'll put the top nut here. And that one needs to be torqued down pretty good. That's the one with your big thick 
washer. This guy right here. You just set it in place. Bring her on down. Of course, you'll do this after the other leg is installed and everything's ready to rock and roll. Uh, yeah, you're talking 105, 105 foot pounds for the top nut. So that's pretty stout. Um, my little wrench here will only go to about 80. So I have to whip out my behemoth torque wrench, you know, to get that to the proper 105. And that's just a, uh, what, 32, 32 millimeter socket, no big deal, as far as that guy goes. And um, you also want to make sure that the fork legs are aligned properly, you know, because it's easy to just put them in place and say, okay, this looks great, when really they might be a little bit off, even if it's just a few millimeters in each direction, they might be off torqued or off kilter. So, you know, once you get to finalizing all of this installation go ahead and install your wheel you know get your axle put through keep your pinch bolts just hand tight at first and, and there's a couple of devices people use to actually align the forks properly motion pro makes one i'll put a link down below for that uh, i'm not quite ready yet to get to that right now as far as finalizing this install but if you just install your wheel, put your axle in, you know, as you're going to finish this up, put your pinch bolts, you know, around hand tight or so. Then, you know, with the bike down on the ground and all this is, you know, kind of hand tight as far as these pinch bolts here, hold your front brake lever and push down really sharply on the front forks, you know, from as if you were riding the bike. Push down real sharp on them. That will help align the forks. It'll help align, you know, the axle properly. It'll help the wheel spin better. You know, if you're noticing that the front wheel is kind of scrubbing, you know, the brake is scrubbing or something like that, you might just have an alignment issue as far as this assembly right here. That's the way I do it. But, uh, you know, if you're looking for a really technical way to install the forks properly, uh, there's a Motion Pro tool that is specifically designed for that. I'll put a link to that below. Anyway, that's that. Not a big deal, but some people don't realize about that pre-tightening of that ring nut right there. And uh, so yeah, check these guys out. These pretty sweet RG3 triple clamps, billet aluminum, uh, rubber mounted also to absorb vibration up in the handlebars. Pretty awesome. We got them used. You know, they weren't used very much. Uh, but these brand new, oh boy, they're really expensive. So, you know, if you want to fork out that kind of cash, you go right ahead. But if you're looking for an upgrade for your triple clamps, RG3 is a nice brand. You know, a lot of the pro riders use them. And um, they're lighter and stronger and stiffer than than uh, your stock ones. And of course they look awesome too, which is always a bonus. So yeah, we're, we've just swapped out the suspension. We had uh, all this serviced forks and shocks serviced by Traction Dynamics. Go to Traction, that's T-R-A-X-X-I-O-N.com, Traction.com. Uh, they are out of Woodstock, Georgia, but um, but you can ship your stuff to them. Like if you want to ship your shock and your forks to them, they will service them for you and ship them back to you. So that's pretty awesome. You can you know ship them your components. They will service them for you, and they can you know valve them properly, shim them properly. Uh, fork seals, polishing, you know, all the good stuff you'd want to have done to your forks or your shock absorber. So yeah, uh, look for the link down below, Traction Dynamics in Woodstock, Georgia. Make sure you tell them Dave Harris sent you from Horsepower House. They'll know who that is. 
I uh, try to help them out when I can because um, they're good people, really high tech, high end place, and um, I highly recommend them. So yeah, look for that link down below. Anywho, that's it. Make sure you check out our other videos. We got all kinds of stuff as you see this beauty. This is our YZ250 engine, which is actually a YZ270. Really sweet. Um, we got several videos on different things we've done to this motor and uh, you know, bottom end rebuild, new whole new um, Wiseco clutch assembly. Totally awesome. Can't wait to get her all done. So yeah, check it out on the previous videos on if you're doing a, a bottom end rebuild or a total engine rebuild. We got some things on there that may help you on setting that up. Anywho, that's it for now. Uh, Google Horsepower House on eBay, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Amazon. We have a online store for mostly specialty tools and parts for motorcycles, ATVs, dirt bikes, you know, power sport vehicles like that. So have a look. You might find some cool stuff that uh, you could use. And uh, we appreciate the business. And uh, New Year's Eve is right around the corner, so we hope you all have a good time. Don't party too much out there. And feel free to comment below if you have questions or anything on working on your bike. We'll try to help you or send you in the right direction. And that's it for now. So you'll have a great day. We shall see you all later.